I agree. I didn't. I think at one point I was thinking the second half, especially maybe nil nil, will be as good as we're going to hope for, or either that or Samuelson was going to do something which was going to open them up. He, he looked like the only one we had really that could do something a bit special and create a goal. I now look at Martin and think, well, you've done it against West Brom at the highest level in the FA Cup, and tonight I think it was just a cut above other people tonight for me. Do you think Martin was unlucky not to get a penalty? I thought both. I th yeah, I thought first half he'd, he'd um, gone past the goalie and the referee said the goalie made a good save. Well, then in that case it would have been a corner, but that, that weren't given. And certainly um, the one second half later on, he'd actually gone past him and then then got clipped. Um, the referee said afterwards it was outside the box, but still didn't give a foul either way. But I thought he was a little bit unfortunate yeah, on both occasions. They had some good chances as well, though, I'd have to say. You know, the, the header first half, I thought they should have scored from. Um, we didn't quite get after them enough, is what we've done all season. And whether playing in front of 10,000 people, someone like Marcus Brown's never played in front of a crowd that size. And part of their learning and their development is to have occasions like this and, and get used to it. And I just think uh, Josh Cullen and, and Samuelson and in Oxford handled that better tonight than some of the other younger ones. Do you think it was something that they relished being in front of all, being in front of everybody? Because it was, it was felt very much tonight like the 12th man mm. towards the end of the game. Mm. It felt like the crowd was really starting yeah. to lift the team. I thought, thought the really crowd fun. wanted something to really get behind us. I thought the crowd were great, but were waiting for Martin to do something. Because you know, every time he got it, you could hear a, an anticipation that something's going to happen. So. I thought the crowd were excellent in terms of when there was a bit of play, you could really hear it. But I think it, you know, it, when you make a mistake early on in a game and you're a young player, I think sometimes when there's a crowd, that can affect you. Because you hear that, oh, you know, and there's a lot louder. You don't get that at Rush Green. You don't get that when you play at someone's training ground. That's why alone does get give you that anticipation of what it's like to play in front of a crowd week in and week out, and there's something on the game. You know, Brad, the two Bradford boys, Burke was desperate to play tonight. He'd come down, he'd travelled Sunday and trained with us on Sunday. They've got two games and they could be in the playoff semi-finals, you know, and, and playing at Wembley. So, to be fair to Bradford, it was it, it, it was not the time to stick him in the team. But he, he lives 200 yards away from this stadium. He's a West Ham boy through and through and he wanted one chance. So, he, he warmed up with the team, but the risk of playing was too great. But they feel that tension now. I, I think Bradford are getting like 18,000 on, on, on home matches. They know what it's like to have to go out and try to win every week. And I think that is the, a little bit tonight, I, I sense that in the dressing room. So to your answer, yes, they were really looking forward to it, but I think one or two felt it a little bit. Uh, do you think Ryan Samuelson's ready to play first team for West Ham? I, I think you could throw people in the team and Rashford would be a very good example of that. Yeah. Rashford weren't even in the under-21 teams at United. Yeah. Wilson went to Brighton, Kane got injured. They then had another injured for a, a striker. You, you throw someone in and he, Jesus, he's done better than what I was, what I was expecting. Yeah. If Martin goes in with Lanzini and Paye and Sacco and, and Carroll and Noble behind him, helping him, God, guy at Tim midfield, he, he, he can play in that group. He needs, he needs time, he needs to learn the game, about when to play one touch and stop dribbling. <laughs> you know, he's, yeah. there are things he needs to learn if you're going to be reliable and play in someone's first team. You can't lose it in the middle of the pitch against Manchester City, because in three seconds it'll be in the back of your net. And I've got a sign. Of course, yeah. Do you want to you made uh, three substitutions on 65 oh, minutes. You looked frustrated. <laughs> <laughs> that, that obvious? It was obvious, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was. Um, why wasn't it working? I don't know. I can't eat it with her book. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think we're better than that, and we played better than that, and that was that frustration. George Dobson was touch and go whether to play. He wasn't quite right for the last week, and um, again, he knocks on your door. So I'm fit. I'm 100 percent fit, and I don't think he was quite where he normally is. So that was a, a, a straight change for, for Moses. And I just think Jair hasn't played for three months, so we knew he was going to be a late substitution. 
and grade him, give us a something where we might beat somebody. I said to Liam, the coach, come on, let's go all three and let's see if that, as a, as a spark of injection of something, um, and we got the goal, so you could say it, it helped. You're going to go up there in May the 4th, so do you expect a different game up there? Well, at some point they've got to score, so at some point they've got to come for us a little bit. And if teams do come for you, it, it leaves space for the likes of Samuelson and Marcus Brown. Um, I think we can play better. I thought they were good, so I don't know how much better they've got in their locker, but I think we can play better than that, and we'll, we'll probably need to play better. I think Oxford, again, he was one who you could see has that maturity, 17 years of age, he's captain of the team, but it, it, it don't phase him that game. He believes totally in his ability, he comes out with the ball, you know, and he didn't look phased by the game or worried about the game, where I think one or two others did a little bit. I don't think Samuelson did. I don't think Cullen did. And for those players who haven't gone out on loan, how's been playing in the cup and playing in this competition aided their development? Whatever you say about under-21 football, tonight us and Hull City have played in front of 10,000. Um, all the other clubs who took part in this competition didn't get that opportunity. You know, we had a great match against Exeter away to start it off. They had. Seven of the starting lineup played against Liverpool at Anfield in the FA Cup extra. Then we beat Fulham in a very hard game. Then we beat um, Blackburn. Then we beat Liverpool, a very strong league, to get the chance to play here in front of over 10,000 people. So for us and Old City, it's a great opportunity tonight to showcase what you got. You know, we, I, I just come out of the dressing room, you've got Slaven, Nico, Eden, fitness coach. They're all here tonight. Both owners are here tonight. It's a, it's a chance for our players to go, come on, showcase what you can do. Were there any first team players here tonight? Didn't yeah, Mark Noble coming to the dressing room for kickoff. Right. Proper captain, you know. What I look at in this modern era is a proper captain. Went round every single player and shook their hand. Every single member of staff. Enjoy it. Mm. Don't leave anything on the pitch. Don't have any regrets when you come off. And you can just see that what it means to someone who's a West Ham person through and through about getting that message through to all, all our younger players. I thought that was terrific tonight. And I thought the manager just now was terrific with the players. And David Gold before kickoff come in the dressing room. We also had um, Manzini, Pedro Obia, James Tompkins, um, Adrian, the new signing Tony Martinez. Quite yeah. a few first team players. Like Martinez be able to play in the second league, but unfortunately he's not allowed. <laughs> Why is that? He's, he wasn't registered he in time. He can't play until next season. Bit of a shame, that. How, how important is the relationship between between the first team and, and, and the development squad? Crucial. You've got those you've got those older players putting arm putting arms around younger players. It seems like everybody's everybody's really friendly. They they kind of working together. It's a good it's a good club, and and Slava and there's the Europa League help. Because the manager won't quite in situ when the first Europa League game come come around. So with me taking the team and a lot of the younger ones playing, that really kicked it off to start with. And there was a good atmosphere amongst. So the manager knew him. The manager knew Reese. He knew Samuelson. He knew Cullen. He knew Burke. And that's continued as the season's gone on. Virtually never less than four of our players training with the first team every day. So there's good cohesion there. Real football people, the manager, Nico, Eden, they talk about the game with us, how we're going to play. It's a very, very solid relationship. Very good. Thanks.